How's it going, everyone? Maryland here, and I'm back on the Hermitcraft Feed the Beast server. Oh, yeah. I'm ready to do some stuff I've been looking forward to for a while. Just got back from my mining expedition over in that cave last time. Found a ton of stuff underneath the base. And I did a bunch of, um, kind of just flattening the land around here. I... <laughs> Oh, man, these poor cows. They were trapped in just the tiniest little space before. Well, I decided to give them a little bit more room. I went over, just chopped down a bunch of wood so I could make some fences. Rounded up some sheep. <laughs> Even a little one. Look at that. Um, yeah, and started kind of flattening this area over here. and Put a few flowers. It's getting kind of gloomy. Okay, so this is going to be a fun episode. First of all, take a look at all this stuff. I put up a whole ton of barrels. Like I said, I went down chopping trees. You know that whole redwood forest? Yeah, I got tons of logs. I found some jungle wood. I've um, been farming wheat and particularly sugar canes like a madman. And been cooking up some more bricks, I think. So, oh yeah, and still got a ton of sticky resin. But I think it's finally time to use some of that. Oh yeah, and the coke oven. Finish that stack of coal coke, which is wonderful. We're going to be able to use that very soon. I'm also just, you know, smelting up some smooth stone because that'll be useful. So, this is the machine episode, or at least we're going to get started with the basic concepts of machines. But you know what? That sheep is really driving me crazy. So, you know what? I'm going to take some wheat really quick here. I know, we're going from machines to talking about sheep now. Hey! Sheep, get over here. Come on. Come on. You can jump. I know you can. I'm going to take you and I'm going to take your buddy and hopefully you're going to be buying where I... No, 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 no. Come on. Hey. Hey. Don't just stare off into space like that. This is exciting. You should be excited about this. Come on. <laughs> what a derpy sheep. Oh, well, we'll take one of them out of the way. I'm going to get these sheep situated and then I will just see you in a moment here. Okay, rounded those bad boys up. Hopefully they'll just kind of stay out of the way, because that's getting very annoying. That's why I moved away from my swamp base, darn it. Okay, so, um, where do we begin? That is a very, very good question. So, there are several different types of energy inside of Feed the Beast. Um, you know, depending on which mods you have, you'll have different ways to generate that energy. But, as a general rule, the two big ones, these are ones that, uh, they tend to be included in just about everything. They're called Buildcraft and IC2, which stands for Industrial Craft. They generate two of the most common power sources. Buildcraft uses engines and pipes and stuff like that, and it produces an energy called Minecraft Joules, or MJ for short. Whereas IC2, it creates an energy called EU, which is not for Europe. No, don't worry, it's not anything to do with Europe, actually. It is, um, where's the generators? Here we go. Generators. It creates EU, which stands for energy units. And it's sort of like an electrical energy. Now, these two energy types are not compatible right off the bat. There are ways you can do um, you know, different conversions for these. But, as a general rule, they power entirely different sets of items. Um, so, it's very important to kind of keep that in mind. Let's see, how do I get off of this? Oh, darn it. <laughs> oh, wait, there we go. Items. I don't know, I think it's just looking in there right now. I'm getting so confused. So, oops, what have I done? I don't even know what I've done. My bad. Alright, we're going to build the most basic of basic engines and in order to do this you're actually going to need a piston so actually really quick oh I put all my ore that's right I was gonna show you look at this haul this is all the stuff I picked up I, I brought everything that I had and put it in here but I didn't have too much most all of this was mined in that last episode and it is crazy very good haul very uh very good start here so Notice I left them all in ore form for right now. 
that's pretty important. You don't want to use up all of your ore before you get these machines going, because you can make some sweet stuff. Might need a little bit just to get started, though. But we're going to take some redstone, some iron. I think I might need some copper. Let's take some of this stuff. Oh, notice how there's two different types of this copper, huh? Very interesting, right? Well, I found some of this while I was exploring, and that's just, it has a different ID. But they should work interchangeably in recipes, so that's pretty cool. And we're going to need either some coal or some coal coke, just to smelt stuff. I'm just going to take a little bit of coal for right now. Save my coal coke until we make the generators. So, I really recommend starting with build craft. You're going to want to have both of these going um, early on, because remember all that sticky resin I've been picking up? Well, we need something called an extractor in order to... Oh, why is it not showing everything? There we go. Just double-click it if it gets kind of weird. All right, we're going to need an extractor in order to do anything interesting with that. Now, that's an IC2 machine, and you can usually tell because the recipe requires an electronic circuit if it needs that IC2 power, which is the uh, EU. It also uh, usually says on it how much it needs. It doesn't in this case. So... Yeah, a lot of complicated stuff, a lot of new complicated stuff. I mean, once you're a pro at um, Feed the Beast, it's like, oh, yeah, I can make a circuit blindfolded. But early on, it's like, what? What do you mean? So, I don't know. We're, we're going to get started on that, but let's just start with a piston. Now, this is a vanilla piston. It's something, uh, you know, you can make in the original Minecraft or the standard Minecraft. You just take the iron and... Oh, I need some cobblestone, don't I? Darn it. No problem. I have this. All right. Just four there. One iron there. Redstone. And top it off with planks. Now we have a piston. Sweet. So there are several different of these engines. The most basic of basic engines is this redstone engine. It takes wood gears, glass, some planks, and a piston. So you're going to need at least one redstone and iron before you can do too much. That's why I really wanted to get that redstone. This is not useful for powering any really advanced machines. In fact, it only powers extremely basic stuff. It has a very low energy output, and I'll get to that in a moment. There's this Sterling engine which is also a very cheap machine. It just uses these stone gears. And again, how you make the gears, it's just four sticks, kind of in a diamond pattern, if you will. And that makes the wood gear. And then with that wood gear, you can make it into a stone gear by surrounding it with cobblestone. Nifty. Sterling engines are not really the most efficient one to do. It generates uh, one MJ per tick, as it's called. A redstone engine engine generates, uh, I think it's 0 0.1, something like that, maybe 0 0.05, a very small amount. It's used mostly just to kind of keep very low power things going. It does have its uses, though. But then there's um, another engine. There's actually several, and I'm going to show you those. I'm not going to start with the Sterling engine, but it's a decent engine for beginners. There's a more energy-efficient engine, though. Actually, there's two. And I'm going to show you those. Combustion engines, these use iron instead of the cobblestone, and they generate a lot more power. Yeah, you just surround the stone gear with the iron ingots. So it takes quite a bit of iron, as you can see here. It's going to take 11 iron. Man, actually 12 if you count the piston. So that's why I was telling you to pick up all that iron. Now, this can be used to burn just like a variety of things. Um, oil is what you can put in there to get a lot of energy. Actually, you turn it into fuel first, and then you get the most. So we're going to be looking at these steam engines, all right? There are actually two different types available early on. There are later ones, such as the industrial and commercial steam engines, but they're, you know, much more expensive. You need some steel for those. And you need uh, iron plates for the commercial steam engine. And that doesn't even take coal right from the bat. So your main decision is choosing between the hobbyist steam engine and the normal steam engine. Now, I could tell you kind of, you know, what these are, but I'm just going to build it. Because I think I've talked long enough, and I think we actually need to 
start with this. What do you say? So actually, we're going to need one silver ingot. Um, man, I hate to have to just cook one. I really do. Although we're going to need gold bars for this, too. I'm going to take uh, two gold bars. Do I happen to have two? Maybe if I, if I have, like... No, I don't. So, let's just start with that Sterling engine. What do you say? This, you don't have to do anything. It will be enough to power the machine I'm trying to show you. So, let's do the Sterling engine. And again, this is just a piston. Oh, we got to make those gears. So, uh, let me actually clear that out really quick. We're going to need two of them. So, let's just put two there. Take two wood gears. Now, let's surround them. Boom, stone gears. Okay, so put the piston there. Oh, I think we're going to need glass, right? Yep. But that's why I had some cooked up ahead of time. Yeah, let's take a ton of it. Going to need a lot of glass for stuff, trust me. Okay, finally going to do this. Piston, glass. Uh, three cobblestone up here, and then those stone gears. That'll get you the very low-grade Sterling engine. Oh, man, that is crazy, right? So before you place it, you're going to want to make one other thing. Actually, I think we can go right into it directly. Let's make the pulverizer. So depending on if you want to go with build craft power or if you want to go with, um, oh, what is it, the... Uh, the, the EU power, the IC2, industrial craft power. There's another recipe, or another machine, and this one uses electricity. It's called the macerator. Now, depending on which version you're playing, this will either be stupidly cheap, or it'll be ridiculously expensive. Since I have Greg Tech on in this, it's uh, very expensive. It needs three diamonds, and then either a machine frame, or a machine block, or any number of things. And this advanced circuit. So it's not something you can just build right away. That's why starting with a pulverizer is a good idea. You can also make this thing called the quartz grindstone. Now, I didn't find any quartz while I was looking around, but this is a very cheap recipe. Very cheap indeed. You just need three quartz dust, and that's really easy to come across if you find one of those uh, quartz deposits. And darn it, it is raining. Why does this always happen to me? <laughs> Let's see if sleeping will get around that. No, didn't clear it up. Okay, well, really quick, I'm just going to turn down the volume. Okay, hopefully that'll just keep it under control. Man, it seems like it rains all the time over here. Okay, so we're going to make that pulverizer, and this is definitely the thing you want to make if you're looking for efficiency early on. You're just going to need this machine frame and this redstone reception coil. This just takes some iron, some glass, and a gold ingot. The re redstone reception coil takes one gold ingot, two redstone, and you've got that coil. And then you just need two flint, piston, two copper, and all that other stuff, and then you're good. That is what you should have your gold be. So I have the copper, don't have the gold, so we're just going to actually, um, it's going to be a slight waste of coal, but I'm just going to do, like, four. The reason is, um, actually, I just want to do two. Really early on, you don't want to use up all your stuff, because I don't have a lot of gold, and once you make this pulverizer, you will be able to double it. Double it! Yeah, you heard me right. So, let's pop one of these in here. Is there anything else I'm going to need early on? I think once I get that pulverizer going, I'll be set. Maybe I'll take, like, just some iron. Just, I don't know, give me a few bars. Why let good energy go to waste? Okay. Because I should have enough, but I don't want to take that chance. So... Let's make that redstone reception coil. Boom. Nice. And then we need this machine frame. So that's four iron, four glass, and then a gold ingot in the middle. This is used in a lot of the uh, thermal expansion stuff. I think that's what this pulverizer's from. Pretty nifty thing. Oh, there we go. Ta-da! Machine frame. 
Cool, so now I just need to make this pulverizer, and I'm going to need to make one more piston. I also need to get um, two flint, so I'll get that really quick. Alright, got another piston. And do I have some flint? I'd better have... Oh my goodness, don't tell me I only have one. Oh no. Oh no. Really? I only have one flint? <laughs> oh my goodness, didn't think that would be the stumbling block. Maybe I can get lucky with this. No! I think I can just keep doing it though. I'll get a flint eventually! Mark my words. There we go. <laughs> oh, wow, that's pretty funny, actually. So, should have everything we need now. Just pop that there, the machine frame, two flint, redstone reception coil, and some copper. Yeah, the pulverizer. Nice. Let's go ahead and put this right there. Now, it has all these weird colors on it, actually. Kind of interesting. In fact, you know what? I'm going to pick it up really quick. Hopefully that doesn't break it. You have to be careful with some of the machines. Because if you just use your uh, pickaxe on them, some of them, particularly the electronic ones, they'll break or possibly blow up. And that's not cool. So what does this thing do? You right-click it, and it smashes things into other things. Useful for processing ores or converting items. Typically not reversible. There's all these different settings on it. It's just crazy. There's a tutorial here, but it's not that much of a tutorial. Basically, you need to get MJ in here. That's that Minecraft jewels that I was telling you about. Right now, it has no power. Zero out of 4,800. It can store some power in here, but it doesn't have any right now. Then, there are these different input and output pipes, and they correspond to these colors. For instance, these two blue ones that tells what goes into the pulverizer. What I recommend doing is making sure the top one is blue. Just like that. And that should be this one right up here. Now if that's blue, you can make something called a hopper to uh, put on top of it. In fact, do I have enough iron? Hoppers are really nice early on to do that. Oh, how do I do that? Darn it. I could just look it up. I'm going to look it up. All right. Hopper. Oh, I need a stone gear and a chest. Come on, man. Okay, that's fine. Let's do that. Okay, stone gear. These are really nice to have. This is not your uh, vanilla Minecraft hopper. Pretty much the same function, I think, though. And then boom, 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 boom. No, that wasn't it. Oh, other order. <laughs> there we go. All right, we have a hopper. Very useful because you can actually put different stacks of items in. Now, if I wanted to place it on top of here, you know, you'd right-click it, but then you get into this menu. Oh, man, how do I put it on there? Well, you could just put a block there, or you can just hold Shift to crouch and then right-click, and it'll put something on there. Ta-da. Now, if we put something in there, see? It's automatically feeding it down into that. Pretty cool, right? Now we could also have something over on the side and pump items into it from the side. You can just adjust it with that. Whatever is blue here, it'll put whatever uh, whatever's coming from that blue side right into here. And then the output will go to this red one. So, for instance, we could have... Let's put a chest over there. What do you say? There's actually nothing in this chest. I'm just going to take this one down. I think this will work. So it should now put everything that's been processed straight into this chest. See that red pipe there? Well, that goes out here. But what's this yellow one? What does that do? That actually is uh, because pulverizers, when you put stuff in them, they have a chance of producing a second item. So uh, let's find um, where's something fun. All right, iron. So it'll make two iron dust. Two iron dust? What do I do with that? Well, I'll tell you in a moment. But it also has a 10% chance of making that nickel dust. So that's what that second item is there. That's whatever the second item is. So that's actually kind of useful. You can put secondary items somewhere else because you could hook it up 
directly to a furnace if you'd like, or better yet, a powered furnace, which is powered off of MJ. And that'll automatically smelt things. And then you can just put the, um, put the side items over to the side so they don't clog up the system. That might be a nice way of doing things, actually. In fact, let's just see really quick here. That's the top. I want to take that back side here. There we go. All right, so that's blue. So let's have all the secondary items go into, like, another chest over here. And then this guy. Because so we're going to want to put things into a furnace. Although, you know what? I think I'm probably boring you because... <laughs> we haven't even seen this thing in action, have we? Let's check out that Sterling engine. So, you can just place an engine directly next to something, and it'll power just that. That's pretty cool. But, we need to give it a little bit of steam. So, just pop a coal in, and I think... Is that what powers it? Maybe that's not what does it. Oh, right, that is. Because you know what? If you find it's not doing anything, that's because it needs a redstone signal in order to function. All of these engines, they do require a redstone signal in order to do anything. So the easiest way is just to take a stick, to take some cobblestone, and to make a lever with it. Definitely an easy way to do it. Then just uh, flick the switch, and it'll start producing energy. Now this only produces as much energy as really a normal furnace would do. So it's not very effective. You can see over here, though, it's starting to accumulate some of that MJ stuff. Now, this is a very slow way of doing it. I'm just going to kind of show you one of the basic methods. And once it gets to 400, it will begin smelting it. And then it'll make it into dust. Cool. So another really nice thing is this powered furnace. You're going to need some bricks another one of those machine frames, another redstone reception coil, two copper, and a redstone on top. And that'll make a powered furnace. Ta-da! Iron dust. Sweet. Okay. So, what do you do with that iron dust anyway, huh? Really cool. You can smelt each iron dust into an iron ingot. So, instead of just getting one iron ingot, for your iron ore. You're getting two iron ingots for your iron ore. That is awesome. That is awesome. Now let's just see. See, I put the chest right next to it, and because that red pipe was there, that's whatever this is connected to, and you can see it's over there, it just sent directly into the chest. It's a very powerful thing once you know how, uh, how these things work, the different colors and the inputs and outputs but pretty much that's how it works. That's a, in its most basic form. I like that. I think it's a really nice way of doing it. But we can make it even more efficient by making that powered furnace. What do you say? Now, as you can see, it's already run out of energy. Doesn't that stink? Wouldn't it be great if we had something more effective? Yeah, it would. But we're going to need a steam engine in order to be really more effective. And these need a constant water supply. Which is a real downside, I guess. But there's a way you can uh, you can get around that. See, there's this one item. I think I'll be able to make it. Yeah, we need a machine frame, a bucket, some tin, and this pneumatic servo, which is really easy. It's just two iron, two glass, and some redstone. And that makes this aqueous accumulator. I'll show you that in a sec, because we want to get set up with those steam engines. They're very nice. Um, but first, we're going to need some basic stuff. This will work for right now. In fact, I could probably even pop in some coke, some coal coke. There we go. Yeah, let's give it some soda. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'll make it cook for a long time, since I have a bit of it. Oh, see, we got some of that nickel dust. Now... Let's say you just want everything to go into the same source, right? I mean, you don't really care if, um, you know, it all gets mixed in here. Well, you can just set both of them to orange, see? Or you can just set one of them to orange, and then it will, uh, it'll just send everything out. 
or you can just set it back to uh, what it is normally. There we go. That's how I'll do it for right now, because I want to get that furnace. So let's take this iron dust, and from here you can just go ahead and put it in the furnace. It's really no big deal after that point. It's just really important to get the dust going. In fact, rather than uh, pulverizing that iron, let's go ahead and pulverize this gold. And that's something we really need right now. You can also set up another of these engines to increase the speed. Because right now, if you click this, it shows it's uh, using 1 MJ per tick. But its maximum power is 4 MJ per tick. So if we set up another engine, and they're not very expensive to make, uh, we just need the pistons. Those are probably the most troublesome thing. Let's go ahead and make another piston. Uh, oh, I always do that. Every single time. Except for that first time I showed you. Every single time I try to do it in reverse. I don't even know why. It's so weird. Okay, we're going to need those stone gears. Two of those. And then... Ta-da! Oh, getting a little ahead of myself. Put the piston there, put some glass there, and then some cobblestone. All right. This will make it quite a bit faster. I'm going to go ahead and put it over here. And we're going to need a lever. Now, this is also kind of important. Sometimes these machines, they stop working if they receive a redstone signal. So be careful if you place your lever too close to the machine. Because otherwise, if it's receiving that redstone signal, it might shut off as well. And that's not pretty cool. Okay, let's give this thing one of these coal cokes. And watch as it goes. Now, we should be producing even more power. Let's just take a look at this. It's generating one per tick. This one's generating one per tick. I think it has to store up some of the uh, MJ first before it starts shooting it over. Um, it's only using one power, but I think that's because it's low on power. Once this starts to fill up more, I think the power usage will go up. I haven't played with these earlier machines in a bit, but it's a great way to start. Okay, so we're pulverizing some gold. Look at all that gold dust now. We got a good amount. We got ten, so let's go ahead and just use this iron furnace for right now, just until we can get that powered one going. In fact, what was the recipe for that power? That was pretty cheap. Oh, right. We just need that gold. And, whoops. Gold ingot. Yeah. No problem. We already have the gold for it. Look at that. Okay. Um, let's make that reception coil first. Now for the machine frame. Oh, I need some iron. Whoops. I wonder if I can get some. Bah. Don't want to have to wait for this thing, darn it. Do I have any more iron anywhere? Nope. Ah, I get a little less efficiency. No big deal. I just need a little bit. Three iron, so. Big deal. Oh, yeah. See, now it's starting to pick up. Now that it has some more energy. Once it uh, gets closer to its maximum power, it begins... Uh, making the recipes and stuff so much faster, which is pretty nice early on. Because it can start off pretty slow. Oh, but this one's starting to run out. So, yeah. These are not the most efficient engines in the world by any means. But they will do just enough to get you started with your basic pulverizer setup. Until we can make that aqueous accumulator thing. In fact, why don't we just make that right now? Got the gold for it. Hmm. All right, let me put this corn away. And, I don't know, some of this other random stuff I've been picking up. Okay, let's make that. So, actually, we really need to start what we finished. Or, finish what we started. Okay, powered furnace, powered furnace, powered furnace. I'm going to need some bricks. I know that much. Whoa, what have I done? Oops. 
There we go. If ever you lose the screen or if this is really bothering you, you can just press O and it will hide it. So that's kind of nice. All right, powered furnace. So going to need two sets of bricks, and these are just made by, you know, putting four bricks together. And then the reception coil, the frame, redstone, and some copper, of which I have the reception coil. I can make the frame. Pop that there. Oh, right, I need the iron. That was what I needed. Okay, hey, you know what? It stopped raining out. I'm going to turn back the sound. There we go. Much better. Okay. Frame time. Sweet. Let's get some bricks. All right, we're going to need two of these. And then, I think that's actually it. Ta-da, 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 and some copper. Oh, right. There we go. Powered furnace. Cool. But there's one little issue. How on earth are we going to hook that up? Do we have to build another engine and hook that up to the powered furnace? Because that would be gross, right? Well, thankfully, there are these things called pipes. And these are what make all the magic happen. So there's a ton of different pipes. There are also three different classes of pipes. There are transport pipes, which are made just by some wood. Well, these are wooden transport pipes, but let's just say the material, kind of making a glass sandwich, all right? And that gives you eight of whatever pipe you're trying to make. Wooden transport pipes, they're kind of like the root of everything. You usually will put those, oh, darn it. Oh, fine, I got enough of this stuff. Um, you will usually put those right next to the machine you're trying to extract items out of. So you don't need to go overboard with those. They also don't connect to each other. In fact, I can go ahead and show you these. I have some uh, glass handy. So I'm not going to need a ton. Oops. Oh my goodness, what am I doing? All right, there we go. So how on earth do these things work? First of all, you can set them like that and kind of looks neat, but doesn't really accomplish anything. Not at all. So instead, what you can do... Let's take all of the stuff out of here, and we're just going to use an example. Let's put the wooden transport pipe there. See? Now it's kind of sticking out of that thing, and that means items should flow out of it. It's going to be kind of messy here because I don't actually have it going into anything. See? And they're just going to spit out. But I could put a chest right next to it, and then it'll go into the chest. So the stone or cobblestone transport pipes those actually just uh, they connect to it because see you can't just do that you actually have to here I'll just show you it's easier that way there we go okay so take this cobblestone pipe and see that actually extends its length pretty cool huh but what you can also do is, on any of these pipes, you can add redstone to it. And I think you can just do it just like, uh, no, maybe that's not it. There we go. Yeah, wooden conductive pipe. Now, there's only stone conductive, golden conductive, and wooden conductive, as far as conductive pipes. But what these do is, they will, um, they'll take along electricity. So... Let's say, or not electricity, electricity, but they'll let you transfer power from one place to another, which is very nice. Let's use that in action. What do you say? So we have these two Sterling engines, right? This one's not even doing anything. Let's take it down. Let's instead, now I'm going to probably move all this around to make it more efficient or more, uh, more aesthetically pleasing. But for right now, I think we can make this work. So let's place that. Oh, darn it. Okay, so if that's facing a strange direction, oftentimes that's just because it's trying to pump power into something. You need a wrench in order to change its direction, which is just made with a stone gear and three iron. There's also this other really useful thing called a crescent, oops, crescent hammer, 
and it's the same recipe except it uses one silver instead. And I really recommend trying to get one of these as soon as possible because they're great if you're dealing with any of that kind of stuff. All right, all done in the pulverizer. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and, you know what, I'm going to set this up really quick. I'll set it up all over again and I'll kind of get everything set up. So I will see you in a sec. Okay, so I didn't really do that much because I figured, hey, this is doing its thing. Uh, I'm still giving this pulverizer some energy, so I'm going to just leave that stuff where it is. But I did place the powered furnace next to it. So remember how this red output is going over here? Well, that's perfect. So as long as the blue output, and you can't see it, but as long as this side here is set to blue, that means everything will be received from that side or any other side with that blue interface. So it'll smelt anything and then push it over to the orange side. So if we put the chest right there, it'll then take all the stuff and it'll go kind of around or into the powered furnace and then into this chest, which is great. And we can top it all off by putting this hopper on top of it so we can have a lot of items being processed at once. Pretty nifty. But we still need some power to this, so we're going to need to make two of these conductive wooden pipes or wooden conductive pipes. They're kind of similar to the um, transport pipes, wooden transport pipes in the sense that they should really be attached to something right at the start of it. So, oops, that is not what I wanted. So if we put that right there, well, that doesn't quite look right, but I think it'll work out. Actually, wait, bet you we can put it right there. Hopefully this works. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so see how they're kind of both hooked up to that pipe? Not the most elegant solution in the world, but actually that's not going to work, is it? Darn it. I should really just wait. All right, it's like out of power right now. It's basically done. Just going to let it send over the rest of its MJ. You know what? It's not really a big deal. Okay, let's do this right. So we're going to want to have some power going. You need to figure out where you want everything to go. Like we could power it underground too. That's not a bad solution because for instance with this pulverizer I want all the extra material that I get to funnel into that chest. I don't want it to go there. So we're going to have to wrap it around somehow. And that means if I were to do power I could probably put it underground just to power those machines. Or I could put it back here. These are just kind of design things you need to think about. What I'm going to do is, let's see, if I put two of those there, put the wooden conductive pipes, then some more. I mean, I think I could probably do that. Let's try it out. We're going to put, oh, it's also really important that you put down the, um, wooden conductive pipes first. That way the engines should point to those when you don't. Well, it should point to it when you set it down. Not always. Eh, oh well. I should really just make that wrench. You know what? I'm gonna get some silver really quick. Let's pulverize it up. Actually, one of these will get the job done. Come on. So there's these golden conductive pipes, right? Now two gold, one glass gives you eight golden transport pipes. And those are nice if you want to transport items, but sometimes you need some power. So you just slap some redstone on the golden transport pipes to make them golden conductive pipes. It does take up some gold, but early on you're not going to need, I mean, you're going to need it all, but you should have enough to kind of keep things going. So as long as we hook those up, it should be okay. Um, Actually, it's not the most efficient. Like, ideally, I should probably... In fact, you know what? I'm going to take this powered furnace. Take it down. Oh, I can't set it there because of the face. Urgh. So much of this game is trying to figure out the most efficient ways to set things down. And I really didn't think this whole thing out. I was just kind of trying to show you. All right, well, we'll do the backup plan of, let's put it, oh, darn it. All right. I got it this time, man. 
we'll just put it off to the side here. I'll turn that one in a moment. Um, there we go. And then I think what we can do should be able to have a pipe kind of going underneath it. So let's take that wooden transport pipe. Oh, it's really helpful. Let's see what color that is. See, there's nothing down there, but we want to set that to yellow. Mm, that's not it. Uh, is that it? Nope, that's not it. Actually, maybe that first one was it. There we go. Yeah, so that's yellow. So let's put a wooden transport pipe there. And then hop up. Not hop up, hop up. Cobblestone, cobblestone. So we should shoot it all into that chest now. Actually, that's not going to work because we're going to have the furnace there. It's going to try to put things into the furnace. Whatever do you do in a situation like that? Well, there's another pipe that's really useful for that. In fact, we're going to need to make that wrench. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it right now. Let's make that wood gear, turn it into a stone gear, and then surround it with some of that. That gives us a very basic wrench. This can be used to rotate things in uh, build craft. And that's pretty nice. So what else we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take two iron to make an iron transport pipe. Now, these are really nice because they let you kind of choose where something's going into. So for instance, let's set the uh, powered furnace there. Unfortunately, we're going to need to tear down these bricks really quick. And probably the wool. Alright. Whoa, there's some thunder. So, see all this stuff here? That kind of determines where it's going. If you right-click on it with the wrench, it will change the output. It can never go to a wooden transport pipe, and it'll always go through that clear bit there. This is going to make more sense when I show you. So let's just go ahead and put some levers up here. I'll tidy this up later, but I think this will work great now. So let's put some coal. Whoops. Let's put some more coal. Just going to use coal for right now, just in case I want to move it. And it is shooting power into both the powered furnace and the pulverizer. Pretty cool. So let's go ahead and take that silver. Remember we got a bunch of silver? Well, let's, you know, pop some of the silver in here. Actually, wait a second. You know what? Is silver something? I think it has a byproduct. I want to have something with a byproduct. Uh, yes, 10% chance of lead dust. That's just fine. So as you can see, now it's really grinding. It's at 4 MJ per tick. Now we're not generating that, it just uses that much if it has like a whole ton of MJ stored in it. And see, it's sending it automatically over to the powered furnace when it's done. How cool is that? That is so cool. And from there, it's sending it over to the chest. All because of these things. Now we're going to need to keep them fueled, so I'm actually going to slap in one of these. I do have plenty. I probably should have been cooking some up in the background, but that's fine. Now, the bottom here, remember how we set that? See, there's that lead dust. It's going over there into the chest. Ta-da! But let's say we wanted to make sure it didn't go to the chest. Well, how this iron transport pipe works, see that glass side? Anything will go through that glass side. Like if, in this case with the wooden transport pipe, it'll go through that, but it won't turn that way. So if you had something here pushing something that way, it would have nowhere to go because it can't go up due to that darker tinted glass on each of these two sides. If I were to turn it, in this case, anything could go from this chest down and it could only go up into the powered furnace because see, the light side is up there couldn't ever go into the pulverizer, but it could go out of the pulverizer. And uh, now it's set Now it's set how we want it. That's just the way we want it. Iron transport pipes are pretty cool, but if you don't understand what they're doing, they can get really confusing. Once you know it, it's just great. So let's set this down. 
put our wool back and take a look. Look at all that. We got silver. Got all this stuff being automatically processed. All the extra things are going into the chest. In fact, you know what we can even do? We can even just go ahead and get some other stuff cooking. Now, on your do not cook list, okay, this is important. Your do not cook right now list. Don't bother putting in any, um, any ferrous ore. This is not going to do you much good right now. If you were to cook it now, all it's going to do is turn into, um, where is it, this nickel ingot. And it's not really useful at this point. Instead, you really want to wait until later in the game when you get this industrial grinder. Just trust me on that. Um, let's see. Probably want to hold off on this monazit stuff unless you're planning on doing like a forest field right away because you don't get a lot. You can pulverize it for a lot more, but it's this thorium dust that makes it really nice. Let's see, tin is a great thing to smelt, copper is a great thing to smelt, iron is a great thing to smelt, lead, not like super important or anything. You get a chance to get in some silver dust. So yeah, and then aluminum, you may or may not want to smelt it. Tungsten, I don't think you can even smelt this yet, so don't freak out. Maybe you can, I don't know. Okay, so... We need to make some even more advanced stuff, but you know what? I think uh, I think we're off to a pretty solid start. We're going to upgrade these engines to something way cooler. But this is kind of uh, kind of that whole build craft thing in a nutshell. Look at all that. See, silver ingots just <coughs> popping them out left and right. Now we can just... Oh, what have I done? There we go. Oh! That's right. I was going to get some ore to put in here. Let's take some copper, some tin. Yeah, I don't need... Actually, I could use some iron right now, huh? All right, well, we'll just put some of that in the hopper, and then, you know what? Once uh, there's room in here, it will just start pulling one of these and start cooking those and send them over to the powered furnace and then sending them over to the chest. And I could just totally put something in here. Like, I could put maybe, I don't know, 10 coal coke in here and it'll last for a bit. I don't want to use it all up because this is really not a very efficient machine. It's just one of those earlier ones. But to make the more efficient ones, I'm going to need water. And not that that's really a problem. In fact, I, I don't know. There might even be time for that. Let's see. really want to have an aqueous accumulator. This makes life so much easier. So I need that tin first. Huh. I don't know. Yeah, well, I think I'll probably wind up doing that next time. I'm going to just kind of see what's up. So I will be right back. Oh, man. So, uh, yeah, I think the episode's kind of dragging on a bit. But hopefully this gives you a good introduction to uh, even just the build craft stuff. This is just one of the many power sources in the game. I'm looking forward to covering a lot of it. I think uh, next time we'll work on getting much more efficient engines up here probably a more efficient layout too I just kinda wanted to set this here and show you an example um, but yeah gonna make some more of these build craft and thermal expansion machines and maybe if there's time I'll show you the uh, introduction to the uh, the industrial craft stuff which is for the electrical power and things so yeah we'll have to see but anyway Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time on Maryland's Hermitcraft Feed the Beast Adventure. See you next time, hoppers. Oh, yeah.